Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third and final exciting conclusion to the 2020 Waco Annual Charity Open. This is the second stop on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I'm Jeremy Colling. He's Paul Yulberry. I just want to say thank you to all the patrons who helped make this broadcast possible. If you want to check out some exclusive behind-the-scenes footage that's going to be released at the end of the month, head over to Joma's Pro, become a patron, jomaspro.com slash Patreon. What are you filming? Get out here, Mike. Hey, hey. <laughs> we got Paul McBeth in the lead. One stroke over Luke Humphreys, and he is putting very well. Birdie percentage, 58%. Uh, that's more than half the holes if you're doing math at home. Luke Humphreys, on the other hand, is a green-hitting machine. He's not putting himself in really that much danger. He's just throwing a lot of casual shots, as we mentioned a lot during the second round. Chris Dickerson with the fire emoji, 11, excuse me, 11 under to get onto this card. He's only two back. He is certainly within the striking distance. Player that I really like his chances out here. Kayla Visca, two years in a row, final round, lead card. He worked his way up also in that second round. And he's looking for a little, little bit of revenge in the Disc Golf Pro Tour after his million-year cashing streak came to an end in Las Vegas. He's here to say, nah, not this time. Not today, Satan. <laughs> Hole one. Par three, 291. Right to left crosswind, sometimes a left to right crosswind, just depending on the time that you step up to the tee. It is swirling today. Under par. Paul McMahon. Three days. Three different courses, same exact address. The wind, tailwind first day, calm second day, headwind on the third day. And each wind or each condition changes the course so much. And look at that. That headwind's just taking Paul straight out of bounds. Not even close. Next to T, sitting at 16 under par from Wichita, Kansas. Let's hear it for Luke Humphreys. I'm Luke Humphreys. I'm from somewhere in the Midwest, and I've been playing disc golf since about 2017. I've played ball golf at a fairly high level and felt like disc golf was a little bit fluky because of those tree kicks. It just wasn't as pure. Oh, it's clean. I started disc golfing basically because I got my dog, Hogan. I had been traditional golfing a lot before that, and I couldn't leave him at home for five to six hours a day. I decided birdies were birdies. I was down to get some, some Frisbee birdies as well. I fell in love with the flight of the Frisbee at the end of the day. I was just doing this for fun around the DFW area playing for cash. And eventually I went and played Am Worlds and, and took that down. Luke Humphreys! That springboarded into a Pro Discus sponsorship. When I decided to go with Prodigy, I knew I needed another form of transportation and bought this van. I got fans, you know, a, a fridge, I've got electricity thanks to the sun. One of the main reasons I got this van was to be able to escape from the cities and go dig rocks in the craziest places. So these handles are actually quartz crystal handles from Arkansas. Able to have the electricity and shelter that we needed, but also able to see the stars at night and pick up some of the coolest agates I've ever seen. So typically during a tournament time, I'm staying maybe up a mountain hike or, or somewhere near a creek in the van, somewhere that we can get a little nature in us. And I'm waiting until 30 minutes before my tea time basically to show up. I'm not somebody that wants or needs a ton of warm up. I didn't forget how to play disc golf last night. I like to stretch. I think if my body is ready and my mind is ready, then I'll be ready to play. And so I show up late, kind of quietly, go about my business until it's time to tee off. We're at Maple Hill. We got big germ on the card today. As far as duties in the 2022 season, you know, I'm going to have less of them. I'm not doing commentary. Of course, I'm still going to be hosting Skins. That's my baby. That's something that I love. So coming into this year's Las Vegas Challenge, my expectations weren't very high. I knew that I wanted to enjoy myself was my main goal and to make smart decisions. I decided to pick targets and execute lines and only think about that, not look at leaderboards, not get caught up in what others were doing. Coming into Waco, literally my second least favorite course on tour. I finished 70th twice in a row, actually. I've only made cash once, and it was in 2020 when I threw my A3 in on 18, final round to cash by one stroke. 
So back to back, places I don't love. I'm just looking to have fun as well. I mean, I've never played on Jomez. This will be the first time there's gonna be a crowd. I think they sold a thousand spectator passes, which is fantastic. They'll be there to see Paul and, uh, and I'll be there to play a little golf, you know? behind the scenes action, Luke Humphreys. You're wrong, Luke. They came to see you as well, my friend. They... Oh, no, no, no. Is that? Oh. That is. Next to tee at 15 under par. It's really going to be tough to save the, the bogey. Fresh. There's no saving bogey. Uh, you can re-tee. You can re-tee. Like I said. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can save the bogey. You can park it from there. From the Paul just threw it a thousand feet out of bounds. It's just a tough feat after doing something. I mean, yes, you can, and I'm rooting for him to yes. do so. Obviously, Chris, uh, and he is out. I mean, you can see the headwind. What it is doing to our league group is rude. Tea time from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Kale Lavisca. Thank you. Kale's going up the middle. I'm no. Is that a hyzer? Surprising. He's the one that's been going up the middle, and now he's going hyzer. And I don't know if that's got the brakes. Does it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So Great one shot. player inbounds off the tee. Let's see if Luke elects to re-tee or go from where he was last in bounds. Yeah, it looks like it's a re-tee. Not what you want to do on the Now card. he's going hyzer. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, I think it's wide enough. It just needs to get down right now. No, I don't know. Okay, so save the bogey. Headwind, thirty footer, tough putt. Forty five, fifty feet maybe for Paul. Wow. <laughs> Statement, but my goodness, especially after Luke going out of bounds, re t Paul makes that. I, I cannot wait for the two hour long, just quick clip highlight reel of Macbeth over the ages making putts from 50 feet out. That wouldn't be a quick clip. I mean, <laughs> but each one just boom, 50 footer, boom, 50 footer, just two hours long of just that alone. Mm. Kale coming up short, Chris off with his par save bid. And this is a huge putt for Luke. Double bogey to start. And just like that, Macbeth is going to have a three-shot lead. Actually, no, it'll just a two. No, it will be three. Because mm -hmm. Chris is going to drop a stroke as well. So that's not something the field wants to do on the first hole. No, but I'd rather do it on the first hole than the last one. Yeah. You got time. That's right. That hole played so much more difficult in that headwind than it did with any of the other conditions. And that makes sense. And hole two, which is a relatively easy hole, a relatively easy par four, becomes a lot more difficult. We were talking about yesterday, the one mistake would be turning it over and going into the Brazos. That is a very real possibility today in this headwind. One of my discs is swimming with the fishes. That's really high. Does it get down? It, yes, of course it does, but... That's tough from there. I mean, manageable distance, but he's going to have to take on that right side, and I doubt he's going to want to do that. Kale keeping it low. There it is. Oh, right. Yep. On the left hand, but our right hand side. Very good. That. Yeah, it gets around that one. This is going to be a really nice shot for Chris. It's going to roll down the hill just a bit. Eh, not too much, but still very attackable position from there. How does Luke rebound? He did so well in round two, not really putting himself in any really tough positions. Yeah, Luke. And hole one, obviously, starting right off the bat, just digging himself a hole. He'll respond well, I'm sure. Absolutely. You know, we were talking about his demeanor. I think that bodes well for his situation that he's in. 
Calm, calm, calm. Mm -hmm. Move along. Oh, just kind of getting one up there. That's it's asking hard to a get, lot yeah. even for him to... Hard to get aggressive there because mm -hmm. once you put that speed that you want to get there, as soon as it's turned over, it's never coming back. No way. I mean, right off the bat, three-shot lead. No time to start giving them back right away. You want to make them attack. Very good shot from Kale. He's going to need a lot of those today. Yes. Track down six strokes on Paul McBeth. It's going to have to be a special round for Kale LaVisca. I'm curious. Chris, that seems to sit down. I don't That's think it's going it. to. That was very overstable, whatever it was. But I'm curious what the largest lead McBeth's ever had that somebody actually did track him down. I mean, when I think of front runners. Stat Mando, find, a, find yeah. the stats. Help us out. When I think of front runners, Paul's one of the best. Oh, gosh, these guys are just turning it over, not respecting the wind. And one thing you need when it's like that is height to make sure that it gets back and fights it as long as it possibly can. Once you get it under the wind, it'll just hold it, speed it up. And he's going to take another bogey unless he can make that. Yeah, and Paul's even farther back than I thought. And that. Right there is going to leave himself a headwind putt. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, but if at all possible, leave yourself with the tailwind putt. Any chance you get. So very uncharacteristically bad start for both Chris and Luke. Right there on Paul's heels to start the round, and now Paul's going to have most likely four shots. And there's a birdie. First birdie of the card with the last player to have a chance to do it. Kayla Visca on two. Good putt. Ah, that one on hole one would have went a long ways. Go birdie, birdie, get too quick. Oh, a little slider. That'll work. Not the start he wanted. Chris wouldn't be the player he is if he didn't have an incredibly well-rounded game, and we talked about that in round one. But, I mean, the woods here really seem to suit his his sensibility with the way he attacks a course. It, it reminds me a lot of the mountains of Tennessee where he comes from. I really think he cannot wait to go do work starting on hole four. But before we get there, hole three, par three, 320 feet. And with this headwind, that forehand route that had been very accessible in the first two rounds is really not a good option anymore. Players are gonna look to keep their backhand fairway drivers low, try to hit that right side hill and get a little bit of scoot and slide. I know Kale's really bummed that forehand route's not available today. Scoot, boot and scooby, what is it? Boot, Root, scoot. boot and scooby. Scoot, oh. scooby? No, I can't remember. Scoobs? I'll remember once this is over. Root scootin' boogie. Yeah, oh, okay. That's what it is. I know. That looks good. That get, Needs help. That gets back to the left. That'll be all right. Paul's going to have a crosswind right to left. Really tough putt. Mm -hmm. Just because your stance on that slope, it doesn't set you up for your normal stroke. And when there's wind and stuff... It just makes it so much harder because you have to be exacto. This looks pretty exacto. Dang it. I thought he had beaten the, the, uh, the Guardians there. But Luke and Chris need a birdie so bad right now. Yes, in the worst way. And I like this. It needs to sit, though. It could be prone for the big so soft. -wee. That's what he was looking for. This is a soft skip. I mean, very easily gets a little higher on the on that little skip, and it can go 30 feet to the left. Let's see what happens. Misses that narrowly. Just barely getting oh, the upslope so, of the hill. Yeah, yeah it's so perfect. Yeah, that's exactly where you want to land. The exact angle controlled every bit of the flight there. Luke Humphreys, park job. I think Kale was even. Oh, was he in the circle? I mean, I don't think he just was. barely outside the circle, but still, that's just such a tough thing to do. He's got to make up strokes every opportunity he can. And Paul McBeth putting for birdie. 
you just have to hit it so dead mm -hmm. center to stay with that crazy tailwind. One birdie on the card. Much needed. This is. <laughs> this is. Would you say the the preferable wind is round one or round three for scoring? Oh, round three. Round three is the preferable, just because of you're okay with the first three holes being difficult, 17 to 18 being difficult. Yes, absolutely. But then you get into those tough par th threes, mm -hmm. and it's like impossible when it's switched around. They're played as par right. fours, right? and one small mistake, you're taking five easily. Par four, hole four, 441 feet. Why don't you just move it back one step and then we can just have a whole bunch of fours here. 154 meters. Turn over off the tee with a forehand. No one's doing that here. It's putter backhand with hyzer to get out into the clearing. You have about a 15 foot wide fairway at the widest. You have to be in it. We're going with this A5. That's right side of the tree. And how many shots have we seen tracking right where that corner tree is this week? Very great kick, though. He's actually going to have a shot from there. It needs to go. Straight skip would be nice for Kale. Very mm -hmm. good reaction. Mm -hmm. These woods seem to gobble up any shot that's slightly off. Perfect. Yeah, that's the one. You miss that but barely, the, and then you're going to be so that's so far. That's the first time we've seen that shot hit this week, I think, on coverage to that level of uh, execution. Yeah, just absolutely perfection. This needs to get... Oh, that's not... Uh, birdie's out of the question from yeah, there. Chris is going to have to dig deep right now. He's, he's definitely slipping back, but it, it's his motivation has got to be get birdies Did now. Did I save that and then he's gonna do this? Okay, that was excellent. That was a stellar shot from Chris. That's insane. I said it was out of the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I would have agreed with you. Had but I said something, I would have said, yes, I agree. Bomber, <laughs> already over one. Hale going for the aggressive inside line and what a shot that was. Those are two shots way out of position. Let's see if Luke can make it three for three here. If these guys actually, like, dedicated themselves, they'd be pretty good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're just all going to birdie this. Luke is going to have a tree and Tricky. some stuff in his footing, potentially, but he's got to look. I think he's inside the circle. <laughs> Paul just whiffs this. He's I like, know. I, it's not gonna happen, but no, <laughs> these guys super shots. That's as that's as good as you're gonna see it played right there. He made it look easy, and it is not. Luke needs this yep. in the worst way. Get his round going, really. Yes, yes sir. Wow. Please, let's see a star frame on four for the. Do it for the fans because this is a rare birdie to get. Just be. You all, you never see a star frame on this one. Never. And we're not this time. Dang it. Chris. A little opening there with the Brazos. It really comes ripping up yeah. through that hill there. And, and it's a scary putt to look at. Chris is normally pretty big, pretty confident. I was going to say. <laughs> He's a pretty big, confident guy out there. <laughs> That's what I, was, I don't know what I was getting at. But normally he steps up big in those situations and makes those, but you know, just not something's not right. It feels like right here off the start. Good putt there. Three birdies in a par. Nothing to shake your head at, that's for sure. Going into hole five par three. 264. You've heard it for the first two rounds. Throw it as straight as you can, hit the hillside, and then drift up right into the circle. You can put a little too much mustard on it, playing the hill and getting a lift and going a bit deep. But I mean, that's about that's about it. Just don't pull it or early release it. That's a pull and an early release. 
You can't do both of those at the same time. I don't know why. He pulled off an early release. That's thank you. Once again, we'll get this together. Kale, I'd pay a million dollars to see him ever miss a shot like this, but it's not gonna happen. Yeah, he's he's the Minnesota goat for a reason. King of the North. All going buzz. Hillside skip. Straight. Perfect. Yeah. Just, that's Automatic. Just, yeah. That's what you you draw up. Here's a Chris Dickerson birdie type hole here. Missed that tree on the left side. Scoot up. That's going to be 28 feet about. Let's see if you can get that round started here with a good birdie putt. How about a deep one from my guy, Luke? No pars yet. Come on with it. Good bid. Yep. Talking about good front runners, there's really two players that you could guess as Chris lines this one up. Yes. Two players that you can think of for the last decade that are the best front runners, and you just never really see them lose the lead. I feel like we've seen Paul lose some leads in the past four or five years. Yeah. But Ricky Wysocki, when he gets the lead, you give him three strokes last round. Pack of lunch. Yeah, you're playing for second place, it seems like. He great, feeds off great that Great front runner, for sure. Kayla Visca, he's uh, playing the best on the front nine right now. He's three down through five. But he's only made up a stroke on Paul. Would you consider yourself a front runner, or do you like to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, or do you? And typically, when you've won only your time tournament. I'm a front runner is if there's a race, a hundred meter race, and after about five seconds, if everyone turned around and we went back to the starting line, I'd be a front runner to get back to the starting line. Hole six, par three, two sixty seven. Left to right bender down the hill. This is going to require your touchiest shot that you have in your bag: putter, turnover, sidearm skips down right if you have the stability right and that's basically it but no what i was saying germ is you've won plenty of tournaments i mm. mean quit making fun of yourself you're a u.s I, champ lots of national tours right. pro tours typically typically when you were winning those tournaments walk us through like was Whoa. were you more comfortable with the lead or were you more comfortable if somebody had a couple on you and then you comfortable with the lead yeah i yeah i i, I won pretty much all of those events that I did win um, a century ago when I had the lead going into the last round. Look at these guys just <laughs> acing holes. <laughs> yeah. Not to take anything away from Kale's shot. That was a beautiful kick They're, off the tree. Yeah, the tree direction and then the uh, the near ace from Macbeth. Back-to-back -back backhand turnovers. Chris likes that. He's going to try to do the same. Has he? Oh, yeah, it's flipping late. Needs to slow you, down. You talk about Ricky being a front runner. I th I feel like it's scarier having a lead with him behind you. I you, you just brought up some trauma. <laughs> I had See, a <laughs> seriously. I think anybody out there in the world you would rather not have or, anybody. Oh, another base hit. Luke Humphreys park job. I think we're gonna get our star frame. I hope so. There was a tournament that you were at. I, I had remember. I had a nine stroke lead with nine holes to go and then a final nine and Ricky tracked me down and beat me in a playoff and it was one of the most heartbreaking things that ever <laughs> happened. Come on, Chris. Yep. Chris, nice birdie putts on five and six. So he's back to even. I was at an A tier once where this fella, I had him eight shots with eight holes to play, oh, and no. he tracked me down to take me to a playoff. Did you take him down in the playoff? I did. That's hard to do once you give up all those strokes oh. and be like, dig deep. I still got this. But, Long time ago. Yeah. These guys are the ones that we're talking about today, though, and we have a star frame on hole six. 
Beautiful drives, two base hits. Wow, incredible stuff. But we are talking about them, and Paul is now officially on fire. Yeah, he's what? He's four down through six? Yeah, he's gotten the last four in a row. No, no, three. he hit three in a row. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hole seven, par four, very attackable. As we saw yesterday, I think we saw a shot hit the rim. Did someone hit the rim yesterday? Fish. Yeah, Andrew did. Fish, of course, not Andrew. I will. It's tough. I'm man. not it's doing tough. it on purpose. Yeah. I just literally just cannot call the man fish. I should. The angler. That's a cool name. It really is a good nickname. Perfect tee shot. He didn't message me. So I'm guessing it's good. <laughs> Paul, that needs the sit down. He did this the first yeah. round. And the second, the second round. round, yes. Yeah. And he did not get up and down. Right. Surprising to see him not change play. Yeah, a little bit more flip up, maybe a flatter release. I mean, the shot was wide to the right side of the fairway, but the, it was so far that he's going to have a really tight angle to the uh, to the entry for the um, to the green. I personally would prefer just because it's oh. so boy. That is a absolute. That's a nightmare shot. Yeah. He'll be fine. He can get it. He can get up and down. Well, up, up and down. For par. Get back to the opening. Okay, that should be jump putt range. But I would prefer to be a little bit off center because the straight shot in the headwind is the hardest shot to throw. But if you're off center, then you can use your angle with your most stable disc and get away with it a little bit more. And there's and there's Uh, why. Yeah, I thought he might have got through the last ones, but there are a bunch of red vine twizzlers on the right side of that. The little bowl area there is filled with little fingers out there trying to grab your discs. So personally, I would rather be left where Paul is than like where Chris is. That needs to sit. Very good. Scary putt. It is. It's it's a very weirdly scary putt. You're looking pretty much pretty deep into the cage because you're so uphill. It's a little disconcerting. See if Paul can make the adjustment today, and it looks like he has. That was he almost made it. That is a lot easier. He made that look a lot easier than it is, as he tends to do. But that was very skinny angle, and he shaped the disc perfectly. So Luke, unless he throws us in, which he will not, is looking like he's going to be five back now. Wrong guy to give five to. Yeah. And Kale, he's going to give this a good bid. Oh. Thought he made it. He thought he made it. That would have temporarily tied him up for second place. Beautiful putt still. Great pace. Very impressed with Luke's putting this year. And especially at the two courses that he says he doesn't really like. <laughs> He's just shredding. And what's incredible about it is that the, these two courses could not be any more different. Vegas is all about distance, all about power, all about playing in the wind, which is something that we have had to deal with here in Waco. But this is all about the power, actually, as we mentioned in round two, can sometimes be a problem. It can be, it can get in your way. It gives you too many options to go for this aggressive hero shot that does not exist. You got to dial things back here at Waco, and Luke has shown that he has both sides. It's short, it's narrow, 
It's right there in front of you, though. Par 3, 213 feet. Just putters down the width. What's interesting about this one is that this fairway, being that it's 8 to 10 feet wide, is about 5 feet wider than the tee shot on the next hole, as we're talking about. We'll get to that on hole nine. Totally. That's a great point. Paul likes to play this with a little bit of hyzer and keep it up left on the hill. Oh, boy. That like was, that. That was narrow. He's going to have to make a good putt now from the back side of the green. I came in there really hot. Paul was looking to hit the ground about 35 feet short with that amount of speed. Laser beam. The limes, the limestone laser. Yeah, he, don't, he doesn't claim limestone anymore. I don't know if the nickname works anymore. I still like it. I mean, for shots like that, definitely a good nickname. Kale. Another. Oh. Bought Chris's disc about an inch closer. Better move it back. I know. I'll call the PDJ right now. <laughs> Big shot here. This is like not gonna work. This is a hard tee shot to throw when you're nervy. Mm -hmm. If you're a little bit off, you have to fully commit and be smooth and comfortable. And if you're not feeling it, it's a that gap shrinks up on you. Going for it. I like the effort. Absolutely. What do you have to lose? I mean, if you a if lot, you're going a lot. For, yeah, sure. <laughs> what thousands of dollars, pro tour points, who cares about those? I want those. Chris wants some more. Chris is starting to heat up with the putter. And just like that, he is two under. That slow start of the first four has been more than matched with the, the last four holes have been all perfect. Little lift from Kale. Swirly winds got to him. Paul Macbeth with a straddle stance from 25. Nah, 20. Oh, yeah. I think you were on the. Easy. Count the steps. One. Yeah, 26 feet. Yeah. Nailed it. Should have gone with my gut. <laughs> Paul's birdied the last five now, folks, and it is is dire for these folks for the field really i mean we don't know exactly what's going on quite yet with chase card but kale was on this league card and he was six back so it's not looking good for anyone unless some the fate starts changing immediately with dickerson being the next closest i believe right because he's at 17. yes i can't keep chris out of the mix yeah, sure. Five shot. Yeah, it's only five shots. But if over, it was Chris. six, mm -hmm. I would I would change my mind only because the this hole is so tough. Hole nine, par four, obviously. The narrow fairway that we talked about, you have to hit it. And then even if you do, it's not a guarantee. But look at this narrow fairway. Paul going down left side. Look at that turn. Did that double kick? Two. Two different limbs kept that down the middle. He's only got. Three good kicks left. In his career or this round? Oh, no. He gets five good kicks around for the five world titles. Oh. It's like an inside joke where okay. you laugh about. He tells me I get a half kick for my AM world. <laughs> hey, wait a second. <laughs> Nobody told me about this. You don't know you get a half good kick? For what about USCGC? No. Those Nothing? Rings. You flash the ring, but you don't get a good kick. Oh, okay. You get a good break. Chris, decent tee shot. Kale, uh, also incredible break. That right there from the tee, he has no idea that he's made it all the way down into the bowl. I can't believe these shots I'm seeing. Yeah, the, we mentioned this again in round two. You, you have about, Period it. about three or four feet that your disc has to travel on that line. If you miss your line by any more than three feet, you're not hitting your line. It's just not possible in this hole. There's just trees in every single position. I think the Luke threw the best shot out of the group, and then he's unfortunately in the worst spot. I know they're all trying to throw down that mm -hmm. right side, for mm -hmm. sure. But 
part is oh. great on this hole. It certainly is. How'd you fare on it? I did something I haven't done in a really long time. I threw the disc down the right side with the turnover wraith. It went down the left side of the second gap. I threw it exactly how I wanted to, and I out drove the fairway by about 40 feet. <laughs> it yeah, was, nothing. I had to scramble for my par. Bummer of a kick there, but actually a fair kick. He's gotten two good kicks now. That's uh, that's 20 feet. And that and that's way easier than the putt he made first round. Absolutely. All right, this is tough. So did you? I parted. I parted all four, all three rounds. So that's not. That's not, really good. That's a good score for the hole for mm -hmm. the week. Chris is going to have a look for birdie from 23 and a half feet. Paul has almost outdriven the fairway. You see him go into the knee, leaning out with the forehand. But the lean out forehand really is pretty open if you're not too deep. Actually opens up the fairway kind of nice for that angle. And look at the hillside skip. Just perfect. It's how you draw it up. You hit two limbs off the tee shot, put you into the bowl, and then you get your easy approach. He needs to look out. He's running out of kicks, though. He's got, like I said, three left. <laughs> nine holes. But the thing is, the back nine has a lot of open holes. Not many kicks to be and had out Luke there. Luke has... Oh, look at that. Kale. He is a putting genius on this hole. Six down on the front nine. Kale, he's five down. Excuse me. Five down on the front nine, but that's a solid score to put up. He's definitely out there doing his best to. Absolutely. Yep. I was going to say Luke has a half kick going his way. As oh, well. yeah, that's right. We got to keep him keep in mind. 2018 Amateur World Champion. Good birdie there from Chris. Yeah, it really was. And look at the, the way he's finished. Five. Is that three birdies on that? And yeah. a par? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And the same for a whole four? Yep. Yeah, six down for the card on four and nine is really, really impressive yeah, stuff there. Yeah, but look what they did on hole one. <laughs> not not necessarily the best foreshadowing for the what the rest of the front nine went, but Paul McBeth holding on now to the five-shot lead over Chris Dickerson, who's worked his way up even after the really tough start. Kayla Visca, he is now in third place, tied with Luke Humphreys, but it looks like... If Paul can just get pars, it's going to be really tough for anyone to come and catch him from behind here. I 100% agree. I mean, they're, you're talking about holes that they can't even really get that they would need to get. And then pushing the gas like that on this course with these windy conditions could get out of hand quick. So he has the strokes to just be able to kind of chip around, I feel like. Once again, we want to thank our patrons. You, you really are so important to this whole machine running the way that it does without you you know we don't we can't do this so if you aren't just consider joining jomespro.com slash patreon small donation every month helps this broadcast continue bringing you all the disc golf content on tour we'll see you guys for the back nine of the last round of the 2022 waco annual charity open in just a moment